Hey folks, Andrew Packer here. Welcome to Trading Tips. I want to talk again about dividend investing and specifically what to look for to find investments that are most likely to give you the best compounding effect over time and really grow your wealth. Now, I mean, I do a lot of research and I do a lot of screening on, on investment ideas and things like that. And I think there are a few uh, key ideas that folks need to think about when they're thinking about, here's a stock that I can buy and hold for 20, 30, 40 years, maybe even indefinitely for multiple generations that I can you know, leave behind to my, my children uh, as part of you know, asset planning uh, and make sure that you know, the company is gonna be around, that they have the, the staying power and that they're gonna continue to increase their profits over time and have more cash to be able to pay more dividends over time. And again, whether you're looking for current income or you're looking to grow it even more by reinvesting those dividends as they come in, since most brokerage accounts will let you just reinvest those dividends into more shares, usually for free or at a very steep discount, this is really one of the best long-term ways to profit in town. But there are you know, a few things that you'll wanna look for first. The first thing that I like to look for when I'm screening for a you know, dividend investment to look for is the payout ratio. The payout ratio tells us how much a company earns and how much is going out in the dividend. So if a company earns $2 per share and it pays out a dollar a share in the dividend, its payout ratio is one over two or 50%. So that's a good sign. Typically, any payout ratio under 75% tells us that a company is in pretty good financial shape and that they have some room to grow the dividend, but they also just have a little wiggle room because, let's face it, over time, any company, you know, whether it's growing or just sort of being mature and in, in a steady state like some of the larger big dividend paying companies out there like you know, Walmart, Home Depot, AT&T or what have you, Making sure there's a little wiggle room for the occasional down year is important. Typically, we have a few down years in markets every four or five years on average, and you know we'll have a recession with a much steeper decline, uh, you know, every decade or so. That can you know definitely weigh on things. So having a payout ratio that's low enough to give a company a little wiggle room. That's a great thing to look for. And if you do have a company where the payout ratio changes one year because of low earnings, that's not necessarily a red flag, it's more of a yellow flag. If the payout ratio is 110% one year because earnings are way down and the company has to dip into reserves to pay the dividend, but then things are covered, then the next year, hey, maybe their payout ratio drops from 110% to the 75% or maybe even lower as it, as it grows over time. So payout ratio just sort of gives you a value check outside a lot of the more traditional investment concepts like just a company's raw earnings because remember we're not just looking at, at a company's earnings we're looking at how much of that is going out to us the shareholders in the form of a dividend now the second thing that I also like to look for when it comes to these dividend investments is just the rate of dividend growth A good company, even one that's mature that continues to grow its cash flows, should be able to, to grow your dividend over time. And this is where dividend stocks beat the pants off of bonds over the long term. When most investors think of, you know, like a non-risk investment, they might think of a bond. But if you buy a government bond right now and it yields, you know, 3%, that payment is fixed. You're going to be getting that same, you know, dollar amount and that same, you know, essential 3% on your cost just year after year after year until the bond matures. But if you're looking at a company that maybe starts out paying the same 3%, but they're growing that dividend by say 5 or 10% per year, which I think is a very good sweet spot that's very realistic, then you're going to get to a point where it's going to beat the pants off of bonds when you're reinvesting because instead of getting, you know, just that, that same $3, you're going to get that growing over time. And even a 10% rate compounded, uh, you're going to end up getting a lot more than what you started out with. And over about 30 years, you'll even get to a point where the dividends you get every year are going to exceed what you paid in year one to acquire the stock in the first place. So as long as you have the time and patience to reinvest those dividends, buy more shares, let the compounding grow for you, the dividend growth on top of that process means you're gonna have more shares paying you even more dollars per share in cash payouts than what you had to begin with. And one final thing I'll also look for when investing in dividend stocks is the idea of a special dividend. Every once in a while, a company might just have a little extra cash on its books. Maybe they just sold off a division. Uh, maybe there's going to be a change in the tax code or something where a company just says, okay, we have all this cash on the books. Let's just give the, the shareholders an extra $2 per share this year. 
A special dividend is typically a one-time event that's rarely occurring, you're not gonna see as often, so you really shouldn't factor it into something like the payout ratio or into the dividend growth rates. It's just a little, it's a little extra something on top if a company does that. Some companies do them, some don't. Um, you know, that can vary pretty wildly just depending on what's going on there. Now, in terms of sort of the universe of dividend stocks, in terms of research, hey, you're already filtering out all of the companies that don't pay a dividend, and there's a fair chunk of them. But even within the S&P 500, just the 500, you know, just largest companies in the U.S. by market cap, you're looking at about over 100 companies that are what are known as dividend achievers. They've paid a dividend for at least 10 years, and they've grown that dividend year over year. Then you get into what are called the dividend aristocrats, which I think are the sweet spots, which are companies that have been paying a growing dividend for at least 25 years. And there are some companies in the 20 to 25 year range that'll usually come in. You might get a company that's been growing it for 25 years and then keeps it flat or drops it for whatever reason, and then they fall off of this list. But right now that there are about 53 companies in the S&P 500 are a little more than 10%. And I think this is a great uh, place to focus on because you're getting great companies that are well established that have also shown a dedication to you know, growing income for their shareholders over time. And then of course, there's an even smaller group that are called the dividend kings that do you know, just a 50 year time period. So over time, you know, you've got a longevity here. Most investors, when they say, hey, you know, we shouldn't look at the past performance of the market in terms of future performance, that's absolutely true in terms of things like earnings and price. But when you have a company that said, hey, we're dedicated to providing income to our shareholders and we're gonna try and grow that you know, in a reasonable way year after year after year, that's the kind of rear view investing that can really grow your wealth over time and let you fully enjoy the compounding process of the market. So those are just how I look at companies and research them for dividend growth investing. That'll wrap things up for this edition of Trading Tips. Until next time, I'm Andrew Packer, wishing you good trading and good financial health.